today we are looking at Ubuntu 1110, the Oneric Ocelot. Now Ubuntu 1110 brings a whole raft of features and improvements that are long awaited as far as the Ubuntu release is concerned. Uh, Unity has undergone a major overhaul uh, as along with the underlying GNOME 3 has been adopted as opposed to GTK and GNOME 2 which was the Ubuntu 1104 Natty Narwhal. And as this is Unity's second iteration, it is looking far more polished and far more usable than ever before. So today I'm going to be diving into the features that make this Ubuntu release, in my opinion, the most polished operating system that I've seen in quite some time. It's a very coherent experience. All of the applications, the indicators, the theming, everything ties together so beautifully that it, it really does uh, lend its name to Unity. So I'm going to start out just by quickly talking about the changes in the theme here. Now, I, I obviously realized last time I spent a fair bit of time talking about the backgrounds here. But I'm just going to say the backgrounds are lovely as per usual uh, and this release in particular I really uh, give major props to the artwork team for selecting such beautiful wallpapers out of the Flickr and uh, and now also we do have a theme selector down here that is a part of GNOME 3.2. We do of course have the ambience theme which has undergone a fair bit of work in recent times and you can see here we've just got a gentle gradient on the side of it uh, that kind of gives it that bevel. Uh, we do have invisible border changes here on the side that uh, you move a few pixels out and it still gives you that grab handle which is also very handy. Now uh, the theme as well, even in the modal dialogues, is looking far more polished than it ever was. Selections look nice uh, and all the buttons and stuff, they do look far more polished than it did in Ubuntu 11.04 and even 10.10 pri prior to that. So enough about aesthetics because Ubuntu really is its, getting to be its own unique style now and as we can see the default wallpaper and etc hasn't changed much at all and they really wanted to keep a consistent theme going here and it's really starting to become a recognizable Ubuntu taste. Moving on to the dash. Now the dash is pretty much the core of what Ubuntu 11.10 is all about and really Ubuntu as an operating system. Here you can launch your applications, you can find your files, you can play your favorite music, you can access applications quickly and easily just by starting to type. Now basically here I can just come in and we've got four tabs down the bottom. Now these are called lenses. Now through extensions you can add more lenses here to expand the dashes functionality but essentially I hit the tab key and I've got applications. My most frequently used show up in the top results. Then I have also my installed applications which are all of those apps there and then I also have apps available for download which are just randomly selected ones from the App Store or from the Ubuntu Software Center. Now the next tab we have search files and folders and it shows up all the recent files and folders that you have messed around with including the, uh, uh, including the folders from your home folder and any bookmarks that you might have tagged. Now, uh, then we have the music, uh, then we have the music dash. Essentially, again, all your favorite music that you play on a regular basis shows up here, and a simple search and, uh, a simple type and search, uh, reveals, uh, instant search results, and, uh, you're never left sitting around waiting for that perfect song. Now, moving right along the top panel here, something that you will notice has changed is that the panel now is, uh, the panel now does have a slight fade in, fade out effect on the global menus and we do have a desktop listing here now instead of just a blank panel with a random menu sh popping up here in the middle. Now the, the really nice thing about this is when you launch an app full screen, so for instance let's just launch uh, LibreOffice Writer full screen, you can see that the screen just becomes the application much like full screen apps in Mac OS X except it's built right into the desktop of course and all applications already support it, it doesn't need to be a special uh, API that the developers have to input. Uh, now the other nice thing is here that I do have the global menu installed for LibreOffice which is in the repos but it isn't installed by default so you can get it from there. Now you can see the window controls here show up uh, by the mouse over and as do the menus they fade uh, gently into view. Now. The only criticism I have here that if you are a new user, you probably aren't going to know what exactly you've done until you point your mouse over that. Now, having said that, uh, really, the decision that Canonical has made here has caught a bit caused a bit of controversy, but in my opinion, uh, it really isn't an issue. Once users figure out, once they do it once, they'll know forever how it works, and they only have to experience it once, and they'll realize the beauty of having apps full screen and having no distractions whatsoever, just the application you're working on. It's pretty sweet. Now, running along the top here, we do have the indicator applets, which of course have undergone some serious work to implement better with GTK3. So we have the power menu, which is what I like to call it on the side here, which you pretty much have 
have access to everything to do with the system right from this menu. We have system settings, displays, startup applications, and your software updater. We also have printers, webcam, and then all the user stuff like lock screen, log out, and all that fun stuff. Then you have the me menu. This is where you can quickly and simply change user accounts uh, into a guest session or just into another user account. You can also update your online accounts here and your user accounts, and you can change all the settings just from this menu here. Then we move on to the time and date app, which does of course have a built-in calendar, which is very nice. Sound is still there and rocking the same functionality that it has for the last two Ubuntu releases, uh, with the addition of Skype controls also being built into the sound menu, which is pretty handy. Then we have the network manager. Network manager does look a bit sprawling, but one improvement they have made is they are now showing up what uh, network card you are using and which which it is connected to. So you can see here that I'm connected to a Samsung Android, uh, but then my wired network is usually a Broadcom Netlink, which is all pretty cool, as uh, I, I, that's actually the first operating system to tell me what exact network card I have. Uh, battery indicator does what it says, and the me menu uh, is like the messaging menu here. We now have all of the messaging stuff consolidated in one menu, which is much more consistent in my opinion and a little less confusing. So this menu does tie into Gwibber for your Twitter and all things of that nature. Chat ties in, of course, to Empathy, and Mail ties into Thunderbird. You do have access to Ubuntu One here as well, which I'm going to touch on later. Default applications. Now, Ubuntu 11.10 comes with a healthy array of applications that uh, they have implemented some changes as as to recent releases, but the decisions that Canonical is making here on part of the applications is making sense. Uh, in all honesty, I have installed a few apps here as well, uh, including Chromium and Cheese and uh, those sorts, but by default you do get a healthy selection of applications. You get Firefox 7 for your web browser and you get Thunderbird 7 for your email, which is new in this release, which I would give major props to because of the fact it is cross-platform, uh, new users may have already had experience with Thunderbird and they know what they're doing. Evolution can be a little bit clunky and a bit slow at times, whereas Thunderbird is a known uh, product to behave itself on all levels. Feel free to let me know what you think about Thunderbird in the comments below as opposed to Evolution because I know there is a bit of back and forth about this. Now, as far as everything else, you just have LibreOffice, you have the Shotwell Photo Manager, Banshee Media Player, and all the fun stuff that you could expect from an operating system out of the box. As far as codecs are concerned, it is a very simple one-click uh, while you're installing, and it will grab those necessities for you. The Alt Tab Switcher has also undergone a bit of work as well, and now we do have a nice fancy preview here that you can preview your applications as to what they look like, and also if you have multiple windows open of the same application, it will show up under the one heading with two windows that you can easily select. Now this is where Ubuntu really starts to stand apart. Apart from the fact that they are working on their own desktop and they are customizing their user experience to provide something very consistent and coherent, we do have their own Ubuntu tools which have been growing and maturing in leaps and bounds, especially in this last release. So first of all, I want to talk about the Software Center. The Software Center has undergone a major visual overhaul. It now looks much, much prettier and it's much more accessible to those who are used to the app stores on Android, iOS and the Mac App Store. We now have top rated applications which are rated by Ubuntu users. We have their opinions that you can come in here and select an application and it will come up with all of the uh, reviews and the ratings that it has received. And uh, honestly, this is a fantastic way to manage applications now. There is really no comparison, and, uh, and I'm glad to see that there is news of the Ubuntu Software Center being ported to most other distributions as it being the default front end for managing applications, as it is the most graceful and elegant way you can do it. Uh, now, we do have some brilliant recommendations here that are all are very highly rated applications that you can install with a single click and, it, and then you once you've installed that application you can write a review for yourself. Ubuntu One has also undergone some nice improvements as well. It is a 5 gig free cloud storage program that all Ubuntu users are free to use with optional packages that you can purchase for more storage and also for music streaming from your for your Android device or iPhone. Simple synchronization of things like your notes, your contacts, your documents or any folder that you tick and with a client out there available now for Windows as well, it really is uh, beginning to be a competitive cloud syncing solution. Now GNOME 3 of course brings a whole vast array of improvements and as far as performance is concerned, I have noticed that GNOME 3 is actually quite snappy. Uh, GTK2 was getting a little bit messy, uh, whereas GTK3 has really tied a lot of things together and has tied a lot of functionality straight into the desktop, and it's great to see that Ubuntu is capitalizing on this and making it much more easy for the average user that comes to this from a Windows or Mac background. Really, they're catering for both camps here because honestly, 
Ubuntu is at the point now where it can compete with Mac OS X as far as looks and functionality, but it can also appeal to Windows users as it is very easy to pick up and use. Ubuntu is chasing the mass market here, and I really think they're doing a good job of it. Uh, of course, they have their L they have their long-term support release coming up, and it's going to be interesting to see how they go as far as locking this system down into something that is stable and ready for the enterprise. But as for performance is concerned, I have noticed marked improvements from Natty Narwhal and all the previous Ubuntu releases based on GTK2. The login time and logout is much faster, boot time is much quicker as well, and they have fixed quite a few bugs in that area that I have experienced for the last two Ubuntu releases. So that is good news. Now, not only do you get Ubuntu Unity, uh, which is the default desktop environment you also get unity 2d and you get gnome shell and you get gnome no desktop effects now we're going to have a quick look at those so here we have unity 2d now unity 2d is a qt based uh, version of unity that is designed for those graphics cards that can't support 3d compositing they've really done a fantastic job here of customizing unity making it look as similar as they possibly can in both in both looks and functionality to the uh, normal ubuntu unity now the dash here is extremely peppy even more so than the 3d composited one as uh, and applications fade gently into view and you can bounce uh, and you can bounce the menu around here much like a touch menu on a, on a tablet or phone uh, etc and it really does look nice um, application icons fade gently into view here and they've really done a fantastic job of making this lightweight extremely peppy and fast but at the same time giving some nice aesthetics to it that really give that an expensive feel Essentially, it's Ubuntu light with no desktop effects, but still some nice visual eye candy just to keep you happy. And finally, we have GNOME Shell. Now, as you can expect, GNOME Shell does come with Ubuntu by default in the default ISO, so it's really amazing that they've been able to fit all these desktop environments into the one ISO. Uh, so you do have GNOME Shell here if you do want to play around with it. They've got all your favorite apps down the side here, and it looks very spiffy indeed. We all know what GNOME 3 looks like, and it's behaving just like it should. At the end of the day, this is the most polished Ubuntu release I have ever used. Now, having said that, this is also one of the buggiest releases that I have ever tested over a release cycle. Canonical has been working extremely hard, and all the bug fixes that have gone into this release have made major improvements. Not only are we building functionality here, but we are also making it much more stable and much more coherent for the new user. I'm not going to hesitate in saying I had some serious issues going into this Ubuntu review. I have tried to do it now for a number of weeks, uh, and it was the, the release was simply not at a stage where I was able to do that. There were too many bugs and there were too many crashes. However, now we are at release candidate stage, and this is really looking like a polished, coherent operating system that brings a simple user experience, easy application management, and a Linux desktop that anybody can enjoy. Available October 13th, go and download this, you will not regret it. Give it a try on a live USB or a live CD, and you will be surprised just how far free software can get you. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like the content, feel free to give that like button some love, and consider subscribing if that is something you would like to do. That will be all from me, I'm off to play with my new operating system.